Proving Lines Parallel. Our objective is to use the angles formed by a transversal to prove two lines are parallel. Who uses this? Rowers have to keep the oars on each side parallel in order to travel in a straight line. Let's look at the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. If two coplanar lines are cut by a transversal so that a pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So if your two corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines have to be parallel. Let's look at an example. So we're going to use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate to show that line L is parallel to line M. So if we look, angle 1 and angle 5, they're corresponding angles, and since they're congruent, the two lines have to be parallel. For example, B, we have angle 4 and angle 8. They are also corresponding angles, so for line L and M to be parallel, they need to be congruent. All right, so let's plug in our X value. So we're going to substitute 65 in for X in both equations or expressions here. And if they both equal the same amount, therefore, the lines will be parallel. So the measure of angle 4 would be 2 times 65 plus 10, which gives us 140. And then for 8, we have 3 times 65 minus 55 gives us 140 as well. So, therefore, line L and line M must be parallel. Let's look at the parallel postulate. Through a point P, not on line L, there is exactly one line parallel to L. The converse of the corresponding angles postulate is used to construct parallel lines. The parallel postulate guarantees that for any line L, you can always construct a parallel line through a point that is not on line L. Let's look at the converse of our three other theorems here. Okay, so we have the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem, which states that if your alternate interior angles are congruent, then your two lines have to be parallel. Same with the converse of your alternate exterior angles. If they are congruent, then the lines have to be parallel. So corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, if they are congruent, the two lines that make those angles happen will be parallel. The converse of the same side interior angles theorem states that if you have your two same side interior angles, if you add them together, and they give you 180 degrees, then those lines have to be parallel. Let's look at a proof. All right, so we're given that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, and we want to prove that line L is parallel to line M. So we start our flowchart proof with our given, but we need a little bit more information before we can suddenly jump to the fact that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. So for A, their hint was vertical angles theorem. So our vertical angles are angle 1 and 2. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. All right, so we're using both of these pieces of information to make up this angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So we have angle 1 and angle 3, but they're both congruent to angle 2. So we're using the transitive property. Yeah, I write this down here with the rest of them. So B would be the transitive property of congruence. And we'll get rid of the little line here. All right, so now that we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, we can use that, oh, well, they're corresponding angles. If they're congruent, these lines have to be parallel. So for C, line L is parallel to M, and the reason being is the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. 
Let's practice determining whether lines are parallel. So use the given information and theorems you have learned to show that R is parallel to S. All right, so if 2 and 6 are congruent, they're alternate interior angles. So using the, the converse of the alternate interior angles, we know that R and S must be parallel. Okay, well we've got the measure of angle 6 and the measure of angle 7. So we have 6 and 7. They're alternate interior angles, meaning that if they add up to 180 degrees, R and S will be parallel. But we need to substitute our X value in first to see if that is actually the case. So the measure of angle 6 is equal to 6X plus 18, substitute 10, and we've got the measure of angle 6 equals 78. Okay, well now let's do the same thing with the measure of angle 7. So we're going to substitute 10 in, and we get 102. Well, if we add 102 and 78 together, we get 180. So, by the converse of the same side interior angles theorem, R must be parallel to S. Let's try proving lines are parallel. So we're given that L is parallel to M, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. We want to prove that R and P are parallel. So let's start by making ourselves a two-column proof. So we have our statements and our reasons. Sometimes people will just use S and R, by the way, for statements and reasons to shorten things up a little. All right, so where do we start? Let's start with our given. So our first given stated that L is parallel to M, and that was given to us. For a flow of a proof, you shouldn't combine your two givens together if they're not alike. Like if this was like another set of angles, you could put those together as one given, but you really shouldn't combine parallel and then congruent angles together in the same statement. Okay, so if those lines are parallel, what exactly does that mean? So we've got L and M are parallel to each other. Well, that means angle one and angle two are congruent, so let me switch the signs there instead of putting congruent in the end. So angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent and that would be the corresponding angles postulate. Alright, so let's continue. So we've got angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. All right, it was given that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and we can state that because they gave it to us. And now we can keep going. So we've got number 4, or step 4. So we've got, all right, well, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, 2 and 3 have to be congruent to each other. So angle 2 must be congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property. And it's of congruence. And then we have our step 5. Well, if 2 and 3 are congruent to each other as well, we have alternate exterior angles, and they're congruent, so by the converse, of the alternate exterior angles theorem, we can state that R is in fact parallel to P. Let's look at a sports application. During a race, all members of a rowing team should keep the oars parallel on each side. If the measure of angle 1 is 3x plus 13, 
and the measure of angle 2 is 5x minus 5, and x equals 9, show that the ors are in fact parallel. Well, we've got to substitute our 9 in for x, so we have 3 times 9 plus 13, which gives us 40 degrees. And then we do the same thing with the measure of angle 2. So 5 times 9 minus 5 also gives us 40 degrees. So therefore, they're parallel. And that concludes our lesson on proving lines parallel.